So uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of go back through a, a quick little um, review for those of you that uh, um, want to go back over what we've talked about so far to introduce our next uh, portion. So if you guys remember, the first thing we talked about in our conic sections was a parabola. And you know we just kind of dropped a parabola, and we were pretty used to parabolas. Uh, we knew we remember that parabolas had a minimum or a maximum, which we called the vertex, right? And we also knew that parabolas had a axis of symmetry. That was stuff that we already knew. Um, but then what we entered in with conic sections is we started talking about well, what is really the definition of a parabola? And remember the definition that we talked about with a parabola was that they contained a very important point, which we called the focus and then also contained a line, which we called the directrix, right? And when we talked about the definition of what is a parabola, the definition of a parabola, remember, was that the distance for any point on the parabola was equal between the focus and the directrix. Doesn't matter where that point was, those, two, those distances were equal to each other, right? That was the definition of a parabola. Then we moved ourselves on to circles. And when looking at a circle, we knew that a circle had a point center, right? It had a point center, and then also had another form, which we called our radius. And the definition of a circle was no matter what point was on the circle, that distance from that point to the center was equal. And we knew that value was our value r. Right? So that was what we learned about so far. So now what we're going to do is we're going to learn a special type of a circle, which we're going to call an ellipse. And an ellipse is going to be very much similar to a circle, except it's going to be elongated one way or the other. All right? So it, a circle is actually a form of an ellipse, but we're just going to kind of focus on ellipses for a second. And I'll get into what the definition is going to be here in a second. So let's go and look at the main important points of the of a ellipse. Ellipse, ladies and gentlemen, we're still going to have a center. All right. Um, in addition to a center, though, we don't have a radius anymore. We don't have all these distances are the same. However, we do have distances from the center. Right. We notice that the distance from here to here and the distance from there to there are equal. The distance from here to here and the here to there are equal. So what we call these is we call these your vertexes or your vertices. And then these are what we call our covertices. I'll just write these out. OK? So we have a vertice and a vertice, and then a covertice and a covertice. Hopefully, one thing you guys will understand is the, the distance from the vertice to the center is longer than the distance from the center to the covertice. Yes? This distance is longer than this distance. Okay? So just remember your vertices are always going to lie on the longer distance. So this distance, we're going to give a value of a. And this distance will give a value. Let's just call this the center. This distance will give a value of b. All right? Now, there's one last distance, though, we need to talk about. And if you remember going back to parabola, we had a focus, right? Well, for an ellipse, that focus is also going to kind of take shape, except there's going to be two of them. And these are what we call our foci. And the distance from the center to the foci is c. OK? So now what we have is we have a horizontal. We have vertice, covertice, center, um, uh, center, and foci. Now the next thing is, just to kind of go through this, if we have from vertice to vertice, this is what we're going to call our major axis. And our major axis is equal to 2a. The distance from your center to your vertice is a. So therefore, twice the distance is going to be 2a. <laughs> And then this is what we call our minor axis. And that distance is 2b. All right? <clears throat> so with going with that, 
here's what pretty much an ellipse, and that's what the characteristics of the ellipse are, all right? So now let's go ahead and go back to a circle. We know that a circle, ladies and gentlemen, when it looked like this, we know that the form of a circle is x minus y, x minus h squared plus y plus k, or y minus k squared equaled r squared, right? Now, let's say we know that r squared is a radius because every single term was equal to your radius. Now let's go ahead and say that I want to get rid of this r. If I say this r, we know r is equal for every point. So if I divide by r squared over here, and I divide on this left side, therefore I can rewrite x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, this would be r squared, and this would be r squared, is equal to 1. That's just another way to write an equation of a, cir of a circle. All right. So rather than saying it's equal to r squared, we could have it equal to 1, and then just divide the other side by r squared. Does everybody follow me? It's just a different way to write the equation of a circle. But I show you guys this because I want you guys to understand that these this is still the same equation of a circle, except now it's being divided by its radius squared. And I show you guys this because when we're going to be talking about a, an ellipse, the equation for an ellipse, this is what we have an ellipse with a horizontal axis. The equation for an ellipse with a horizontal axis is again, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and we write it equal to 1. We don't write it equal to r squared because does this have a radius that's equal for every, for every point? No, it doesn't have a radius that's equal for every point, right? So we can't say it's equal to r squared. So we write it equal to 1, but then we need to determine, well, what are our two values, right? What are our kind of like two points that we could use? Our points of interest are going to be from the center to your vertice, which is A, and from the center to your covertice, which is B. So if you have a horizontal ellipse like this, your larger um, distance, which would be a squared, is going to be under your x. The shorter distance, which would be your b squared, is under your y. That's for a horizontal major axis. All right, and I'll go through the I'll go through what happens when you have a vertical one here in a second. But that's going to be your a, b, and c. The last thing I just want to go through, guys, I'm not going to get into the big details of it, um, how A, B, and C are related to each other. However, if you guys just want to write this down, A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. I can explain to you guys where this comes from, if you'd like. But I'm pretty sure that a lot of you might just be a little bit too much. So we'll just go with the relationship of a hyperbola, I'm sorry, of an ellipse. The relationship of our a, b, and c is kind of like the Pythagorean theorem, but it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared. Okay? I'm just going to leave out that. If you want an explanation, I'll be more than happy to provide it to you. But for this video, I'll just kind of keep this short. You need to know the formula for the horizontal, the relationship, and then obviously all the important parts. Okay? Yes? I'm just telling you, it's just the relationship between A, B, and C are related by that formula.